Welcome to the Advance Your Art podcast, where we talk about the journey from artist to entrepreneur and everything in between. You've worked hard to hone your craft. Now take it to the next level with tips, techniques, strategies, and routines used by successful artists to grow their businesses and careers. Now, let's get started and have some fun with your host, Yuri Cataldo. Welcome to the show. How are you this afternoon? I'm good. I'm good. No complaints. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. That's always good. So thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Of course. It's my pleasure. So I'd like to start off by asking you to describe yourself and what you do. Okay. Uh, I'm a professional dancer and scoliosis advocate. And currently, I am in my sixth year as, well, actually, I'm in my hmm, eighth year as a professional dancer. Okay. Uh, I danced with Ailey 2 for two years and Visceral Dance Chicago for two, um, for six seasons. Okay. Um, so I've been dancing, uh, professionally for eight years and I'm also, the founder of the Paige Fraser Foundation, Mm -hmm. which we founded in 2017. Wonderful. All right. So you definitely keep very, very busy these days. Yes, I do. (laughs) (laughs) So let's start from the beginning. What initially got you interested in dance? Uh, My mom put me into dance when I was four years old because there was a studio that had opened up uh, near her job and she says as a child I always used to fuss for them to turn on the radio so I just loved music and I loved the sound of it mm-hmm. uh, and she thought that dance would be a great place for me to not only dance but be around music um, and ever since I was four years old I have not stopped dancing <laughs> <laughs> and I'm now 28 years old. Oh, sure. Oh, wow. So you've definitely yeah. kept it going. That's great. Yeah. So how did, what kind of uh, schooling then did you go for to uh, to be trained as a professional dancer? Did you go the kind of the traditional route through different ballet and dance schools, or did you go to a university and go back around that way? Uh A mixture of both, actually. Uh, So I started with uh, the ballet studio, and I would go there after school. So I went to a normal uh, elementary school. It was a Catholic school. Um, And after school, I would go dance from, I think it was like 5 p.m. to 10 p.m., which is crazy to me because now as a professional most of my dancing and rehearsing is during the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the fact that I was so young and able to do academics and then go to dance is crazy. Um, so, yeah, most of my upbringing, that was the schedule. And I danced Monday through through Saturday. Um, and as I got older, I auditioned for the Performing Arts High School in Manhattan. Mm-hmm. And I was able to, uh, once I was accepted, I was able to train at the prestigious Alvin Ailey School in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And so that program was really catered towards uh, the performing arts. And as a dance major, we still had academics, but we danced earlier in the day, uh, roughly from 2 to 4, 4.30. Uh, so we went to academics and then we would take a bus or walk to the Ailey school and have two different dance classes a day. Mm-hmm. And that was Monday through Friday. So it was the first time in life that I had I had a weekend to myself because prior to that I was going Monday through Saturday, sometimes Sundays if we had nutcracker rehearsals. Mm-hmm. Um, so high school was an, uh, the next step for me and it was in high school when I started to really realize my potential and people were 
teachers were pushing me and and showing that they believed in me and saw something in me, which was nice. Mm -hmm. Um, Also training at the Ailey School, I was around uh, dancers and faculty that looked like me. So as I stated, I started with ballet, which Mm -hmm. is usually a a white dominated um, style of dance. And when I went to the Ailey School, I was around dancers of all shades. Um, not only Blacks, but Hispanics and, um, you know, uh, just all types of people were in my, my class. So that was also um, really different for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, it was it was also a, a, a time when I was going through a very big uh, shift in my life because freshman year I was diagnosed with scoliosis and just as I was beginning to learn all these different styles of dance, jazz, modern, African, um, I was diagnosed with scoliosis. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was very, very difficult to navigate as a teenager. Uh, luckily, I had the love and support of my parents, my mom and dad. And um, when we, were, when I was first diagnosed, the doctor said, you know, she may need surgery because this could get worse. And that was like the worst thing to hear as a dancer because the surgery would limit my range of motion. Mm -hmm. Um, And just being 13 years old, you don't want to hear that. Um, And luckily my parents helped me to uh, find another route. And we found a chiropractor uh, who basically just did um, spinal adjustments and explained to me what was going on. And I had to learn about the anatomy of my body and and learn that things would function a bit differently. Mm -hmm. And I was also, um, it was recommended that I wear a back brace. So I had two back braces that were made um, uniquely for my spine and it kind of, put me in a position where um, posture wise, I wasn't uh, sitting in my curve. Um, So I wore the back brace to school and while I was sleeping, the only time I did not wear this back brace was when I was dancing. So um, for me, dance has always been freedom and dance has always been healing because it was truly the only time that I felt free. Yeah, definitely. That's well. That's 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 really interesting and exciting that you were able to overcome scoliosis as a dancer. How has the condition of of scoliosis? How has that how has that affected your your dancing uh, from when you were first diagnosed at thirteen to to now? I mean, or or has it affected it? Oh, tremendously. My I'm never this. I'm never going to be the same. Um, <laughs> I didn't get the surgery, thankfully, because my spine basically fused and stabilized where it was Mm -hmm. as I was growing. Some cases, the spine progressively gets worse. In some cases, it gets worse rapidly. Um, So early detection was a huge benefit for my um, situation. Uh, I would say now, as I'm in, like, the middle of my career, uh, I've had to really take up on different forms of therapy to continue to maintain a healthy spine. Mm-hmm. And when I say healthy spine, I mean a spine without injuries, without pain, without, um, you know, really being in tune with my body and aware of my alignment. And um, in addition to chiropractic care, I've had to start doing floor bar. And floor bar is a, a basic, basically a form of dance, but it is done on the floor. Okay. And um, you do exercises that stabilize your spine and also locate within your body weak areas, um, whether that's your abdominal, your core, inner thighs, hamstrings, glutes. Um, you do exercises that kind of target those weaker areas so you can on the floor build strength and really use your alignment to um, basically correct yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, And floor bar I do twice a week. 
when I started, I did it about three to four times a week. But now it's something that I can do on my own before rehearsal or at the end of the day. Um, and believe it or not, I do it through Skype. Uh, my teacher is in New York City um, and I'm in Chicago. So there's never an excuse. If there's something <laughs> you have to do, whether it's exercise, eat right, meditate if you're willing you find a way yeah. and for me i would rather do floor bar twice a week than my my spine get worse and for me to have to get surgery and that's just how i see it um so it's become part of my my life my life and um i i'm really thankful that i found out about it and it's helped me tremendously with just small injuries that may happen as a dancer and um, makes you check in with yourself. Yeah, definitely. So I'm curious then, so the the journey after Alvin Ailey to to what you're doing now, you've, you've been part of a, a couple of amazing companies. You have had some great projects working with Beyonce and, and other commercial gigs how did that evolution happen from Alvin Ailey to what you're doing now and those opportunities? Oh, man, good question. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, after I went to the performing arts high school um, and I, I kind of got through the diagnosis, I realized dance was really what I wanted to do. And I went to college. I went for one year to Dominican University in California uh, where I trained at the Lines School, L-I-N-E-S, Alonzo King Lines. And after a year in the Bay Area, I decided I wanted to move back to New York. And I transferred to Fordham University, where I ended up right back at the Ailey School. Um, <laughs> isn't that something? That is. And, you know, God, that's just the full circle of life. Mm -hmm. um, I had always, you know wanted to be a ballerina and then once I was at lines and was studying ballet more and doing more point work I realized how much I missed modern dance um so I transferred and yeah um my what was it my junior year at Fordham I was offered an apprenticeship with Ailey 2 which is the second company to the world-renowned Alvin Ailey mm -hmm. And my senior year, I was offered a job with Ailey 2. So Ailey 2 is a dance uh, dance company of 12 dancers that they pick from the school of thousands. Um, so it was an honor to be in Ailey 2. We toured to places of the world I would have never imagined I would, would go. Um, you know, we went to Europe. We went to we traveled domestically we went to caribbean islands it really was um, my first uh experience as a professional dancer mm -hmm. um and the standard was high because alvin ailey himself is a dance legend and pioneer mm -hmm. so being an ailey too we were ambassadors of mr ailey um after my two-year contract i was one of the dancers that did not get into the first company. Um, and no matter how much I worked and, and received great feedback, it just was not in the stars or the alignment for me. Mm -hmm. um, and just me and how I am, I don't give up. <laughs> so when I found out I was not accepted into the main company, I auditioned for Visceral Dance Chicago, which was a new company in Chicago. And as scary as it sounded, it was also very exciting mm -hmm. um, because I knew if I got in, I would be a founding dancer of this company forever. Um, and I got in, which was incredible because it was like, okay, well, here I am. I have to pack up and move to Chicago in, in two weeks. Mm -hmm. It literally felt like that. Um, I moved here, didn't know anyone. Uh, me and my boyfriend moved here, and I was very grateful to have him by my side. Um, and, yeah, in 2013, 10 of us helped to start this company. 
Um, and I don't regret my choice moving here because being a part of this company for six seasons has been life-changing for